This will be about opportunities to get involved in the college in Fresno State. You'll be hearing from current students and alumni about their engagement in various programs and clubs. It may feel like you don't have time for too much engagement, and you're right to be cautious about your time commitments. But meeting people with common interests and different backgrounds, as, as well as classmates with different interests and priorities, working together as a team on collaborative projects, it can be very energizing and inspiring. And the connections you make can last a lifetime and open up the door to many exciting possibilities and career prospects. Again, it, it's a great time to be engaged in science and mathematics. We need more STEM graduates for national health, progress, and economic prosperity, like now more than ever, right? We're a network community, and by bringing together our diverse expertise, backgrounds, and experiences, we're able to comprehend and appreciate the world, and as I said before, solve complex problems in the way that it would be impossible to do in isolation. And these challenges include those relating to food, water, health, and the environment. And all those are really important to the Central Valley and the world. So many scientists and mathematicians that started their careers at Fresno State are creating solutions to these problems now. And you heard from, from uh, our um, top dog and uh, famous, uh, famous uh, scientist, Ray Rodriguez in August, You'll meet some more alumni today. So again, the success of our college is more than our teaching and research activities. And it's about the development of human capital and the rising and advancing of the next generation of 21st century scientists, mathematicians, health professionals, and educators. So that's you. We're very proud of the accomplishments of our alumni. We've gone on to outstanding graduate programs and professional schools. And, and exciting industry jobs and, and really as part of an in-demand workforce. So you have a great future ahead of you. And at this point, enough of me talking. I'm going to enjoy um, observing the presentations and, and, uh, and the uh, a panel. And it's a pleasure to introduce you to the very talented and hardworking Senator for the College of Science and Mathematics, Mandeep Karp. And she's actually a double major in biology and chemistry and um, is involved in all aspects of uh, campus organizations and, and really um, has, I think, um, made, made the most of all the opportunities here. So uh, pleasure to introduce her. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm just wondering, Celine, will you be pulling up the PowerPoint? Okay, fantastic. So um, I am one of the co-hosts along with Celine Kinder, who's the communication specialist of our college. And today we're gonna be talking about the benefits of getting involved. We're gonna have a student panel and alumni panel. I'll be walking us through some of the CSM affiliated clubs and organizations. And then at the end, there will be time for a Q&A. So according to our recent surveys, only half of freshmen think that it's important to join a club. And only half of CSM graduates um, reported being a part of a club. But those that do end up being a part of a club or organization end up having a stronger connection to their department and university. They feel more confident in their ability to learn and understand science and math. They were more likely to feel like they have a pl place in science. And these factors are known to improve the likelihood of successfully completing a CSM degree or program. Students going into STEM disciplines. It is a critical time for STEM education. The College of Science and Mathematics at Fresno State embraces our role of preparing the next generation of science, technology, engineering, and math professionals. Our rigorous and engaging curriculum and programs are designed to give our students the competitive edge for excelling in exciting and diverse 21st century careers. Our students come to us from the Central Valley, every corner of California, and all around the world. They come from generations of bulldogs and from families where a college education has, until now, been a distant dream. We are providing students with opportunities and access to a high-quality STEM education. 
Our students are as diverse and varied as our region and nation, but all share the same true grit and determination and the will to overcome any obstacle in their path. They aspire to improve their lives and those of their families, to transform our communities and our world. They come to us with dreams of solving society's greatest challenges in food, water, health, and the environment, complex problems that are relevant to the Central Valley and the world. We're providing our students with the tools to find solutions to these major challenges. We aspire to unleash the potential of our students and transform them into the leaders that are reshaping our valley. We are leading the way in innovative STEM teaching and research that enables students from all backgrounds to achieve their potential. We are serving as a national model for the integration of teaching and research while developing the skills beyond the classroom needed by a modern STEM workforce. We are growing and developing our region's K-12 STEM educators and inspiring and educating the next generation of STEM students through meaningful outreach. Our Downing Planetarium and Museum welcomes over 20,000 K-12 students a year to learn about the universe. Our physics outreach program is reaching hundreds of schools and thousands of students in the Central Valley. We are partnering with industry and regional agencies to solve regional challenges. We are proud of the accomplishments of our alumni who have gone on to important industry positions in the workforce, as well as prestigious graduate programs and highly ranked medical, dental, and pharmacy schools. From dreams, to words, to character, to actions, to habits, to accomplishments, to destiny. The College of Science and Mathematics at Fresno State is growing the next generation of science and technology leaders that are transforming our region. We are strategically located in time and place to help usher in the next revolution in STEM research and education and to be a positive change agent for the region and the world. Come visit and learn more. Join us in our journey. I hope that video was informative and inspiring to you all. Um, right now, we'd like to invite everyone to make sure that your microphone is off and invite our panel of students to please um, turn on your, your, your video and unmute yourself so that we can begin our student panel portion. Okay, and for the best viewing option, I recommend that you select on the right hand corner speaker view. That way you're able to see the, our panel as they, they speak. If you're not on the panel, please make sure to turn off your video. That way we can make sure that those that are on the panel are uh, being shown when they talk. Okay, and with that being said, we'd like to um, introduce Jacob Papolian. Um, Jacob, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Hi, everybody. My name is Jacob. I am a biochemistry major. This is my fourth year with the College of Science and Math, and I hope to graduate in the spring. I'm um, kind of about my background. I'm a first generation college student. My parents immigrated here from Armenia, and um, I am involved in research with Dr. Corey Brooks, um, and I'm involved with the Advising and Resources Center as a peer mentor, and I am with the Dean's Student Advisory Circle here on campus. Welcome. Thank you, Jacob. And we'd like to invite Kiara Peary from, tell us a little bit about yourself, Kiara. Hi everyone, I'm Kiara Peary. Um, I'm a freshman and I'm majoring in biology and minoring in Italian. Um, I'm also a part of the Smith Camp Family Honors College. And a few of the organizations I'm involved in right now are Camp Kesem, um, I'm the volunteer coordinator for Camp Kesem this year, um, also the Dean's Advisory Circle, um, as well as, um, well, the Smith Camp Family Honors College. So, yes, that's everything. Thank you. Um, Dilpri, we'd like to welcome you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, everyone. My name is Dilpri. I'm a third year biology major, 
and I'm minoring in child and family science. So here on campus, I'm a peer mentor for the CSM Mass Mentorship Program. And I'm also an instructional student assistant for the CSM 10 class for our Bond Experience Program. And along with that, I'm also a club officer for our Doctors Without Borders chapter here at Fresno State. Thank you, Zilfri. And we'll welcome next, um, Natalie. Um, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself, Natalie? Hello, everybody. My name is Natalie Aceves. I'm a biology major with chemistry and Spanish minors. Um, similarly to Jacob, I'm a first-generation student, um, both in college and my parents immigrated from Mexico. Um, I am also part of the Smit Camp, Smit Camp Family Honors College. I'm involved with the Dean Student Advisory Circle. I'm part of Phi Kappa Phi, Sigma Alpha Lambda, and the National Society of Collegiate Scholars here on campus. And I'm currently working with Alexander Ewing to co-found a biochemistry club here with CSM. Thank you, Natalie. And one thing that she didn't mention, but I think is notable, is that she recently was awarded the 2019 President's Volunteer Service Award. So I mean, she is super involved. Um, and next, we'd like to welcome Alexander Ewing. Um, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself, Alexander? Yeah. Uh, I'm a fourth year biochemistry major with a minor in mathematics. And I'm also in the Smicamp Family Honors College and Sigma Alpha Lambda. And I currently serve as an officer for the chemistry club. And I'm also in the progress of founding the biochemistry club. Great, well, thank you all for joining us. And we'll start off with a few questions that were asked um, as participants were asked to register. One of the questions was, how did you become involved in the College of Science and Mathematics? Um, feel free, anyone to chime in. I'll go ahead and chime in. Um, being involved, it, you kind of have to do a little bit of the footwork to kind of see what you, what you want to get involved in, whether that's talking to your advisor or talking to another peer who's been through it. Um, just having them share their experiences, but you got to be involved in something that you like. And how I got involved is I just kind of, um, I talked to one of my friends who was an alumni and he told me to, you know, start joining HCOP, which is our health careers opportunity program. And then from there, like I learned a little bit about more clubs that are offered and more, um, more organizations and clubs that are offered through joining one. So it kind of like, you kind of go into one and then you find out about more as you get into it, but just talk to people, ask them what clubs they join and um, do your research and see what clubs are available and then reach out to advisors of any clubs or anything like that, um, just to see what your interests are and what you want to be involved in. Thank you, Jacob. Um, is there any other tips that you would offer anybody that wants to get involved? Is that, sorry, Celine, was that directed towards me? Oh, it could be anybody. Okay. <laughs> now well, we can move on to our next questions. On um, this one specifically is regarding what tips would you offer students who would like to get involved? I could take this one. Um, I would just say to take the first step, like Jacob was saying, to reach out. Um, the initial step is just reaching out to different people. Like you can email people in your department. You can look at um, upperclassmen. Uh, something I did since I'm a freshman is I started uh, making friends with upperclassmen and I would just ask them, um, what are some good clubs that are, um, for example, I want to go into medicine. I was like, what are some good clubs that are um, good for pre-med? And so they would give me some clubs to join and then I'd join them. Um, and then from there you meet more people and then it expands. So it's kind of like you have to take the initial step to um, get involved. Yeah, I'm adding on to that. Um, you have to step out first and you have, kind of have to get out of your comfort zone sometimes because sometimes it's hard to just reach out to professors. So I know starting off my freshman year, um, I reached out to the University Student Union. They had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with me and they went over all the clubs that are available on campus. 
and that was just a good starting point. Also, um, I went to SI in tutoring, and they're normally upperclassmen. So they, they can, if they match your interest, they give you a lot of opportunity that you can join. Because when you're a freshman, you don't really know much. So you really have to reach out to upperclassmen, and that's how you can get more involved. And um, as Jacob was mentioning, if you join organizations like LCM and HCOP, they provide the supportive things. They give you a lot of opportunities to join, and that's one way you can definitely start off. Natalie, would you give any um, tips for people that are looking to get involved? I think similarly to what everybody has been saying, <clears throat> it's super important to take the first step to get involved, whether it's with clubs or joining a research lab. So I emailed about three to four different professors trying to join a research lab when I was a sophomore. And sometimes you just have to maybe swallow your pride if you're embarrassed about asking because sometimes some people will respond other people will respond but they'll kind of grill you on what you what they want out of you but it's all part of the process and it's totally worth it I joined Dr. Ross's lab in early 2019 and that was through multiple emails and being persistent and keeping on with trying to get involved and branch out and talk to people Thank you, Natalie. Alexandra, are there any tips you would offer students who want to get involved? Probably the easiest thing to do would be you can check on Engage for any clubs that are active on there, and then you can try to submit in, like an application to join. Basically, just press a button and ask to join the club, and then you can get information and notification about going to the club meetings. And then once you're at the club, you can then speak to people and then kind of familiarize yourself with whatever the field is or what the goal of the club is. And then also it's really good just to talk to professors. Like the easiest way is just to go to their office hours because then it's just one-on-one -on -one and then they're a lot more personable. And you can really like make a relationship with your professor and then they can try to advise you on like future courses to make or like clubs to join. That's all great advice. Thank you all for sharing. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention at the earlier of this, um, at the beginning of this panel is to please submit your questions. If you didn't get a chance to add them as you registered, you can still send those questions in via chat and we'll be reviewing them too. If we get, um, so please make sure you're, you're using the chat feature. The next question that we received was, how has getting involved benefited you? Jacob, if you don't mind, we'll start with you. Sure. Um, getting involved was probably, I did it a little bit later. So um, hopefully you guys take some of the tips that we offered at this fall fair to get involved as soon as possible. Um, I feel like by getting involved, I think Mandeep mentioned one of the points, the benefits of getting involved. And for me, it was, I got a deeper connection to Fresno State and their and the campus. And I feel like by getting involved, I got to uh, gain experiences with talking with different people, learning how to network, um, and just getting involved in the things that I'm passionate about. And kind of it kind of helps you with your career choice too. So if you're not sure about what you want to do, and you go and explore like the pre-med club or um, the chemistry club, and you're interested in teaching, or you're going to medical school, or whatever it may be, it kind of helps you. Um, solidify your decision or maybe change it. Um, for me, it helped me solidify that I do want to continue my path to medical school, but it just, it, it helps you get a deeper connection with the college. And it also helps you with your own career path and like getting some toolkits, like talking to, you know, a various different individuals. And um, it really helps you um, become a better person. Thanks, Jacob. And Tara, do you want to chime in in regards to getting involved and how um, you think it's benefiting you? Yeah, so um, as a freshman, since I haven't been on campus at all this year, um, getting involved has really been the only way um, to kind of make friends, I guess I'd say, because a lot of my classes are asynchronous, so you don't really get to meet a lot of people. 
it's kind of hard in breakout rooms when people don't really turn on their cameras or go off mute. So becoming um, a member of a bunch of clubs has led me to meet a bunch of new people. And I feel like I've gotten to know a lot more people that way. Um, so yeah, as Jacob was saying, you feel like you're a part of the campus. Um, and it, like during this time, it gives you something to do. So you're not just spending, um, you know, like 12 hours in your room, just like school and then studying and then homework. You're actually um, engaging in different activities. Yeah, great point, Kara. I can only imagine how, if you don't have that one-on-one -on -one interaction, how difficult that would be to make friends, especially as a freshman. So definitely how helpful um, clubs and organizations can be for that. So Fred, do you mind chiming in in regards to what benefits you've seen since you've joined organizations and clubs at Colleges of uh, Mathematics? Yes, yeah, so I'm adding on to what they said. I definitely felt more connected and actually met a lot of students who matched the same interest. And I know, especially as a pre-med, you really want that support and find friends who are also the same pathway. So you can form study groups and encourage each other because I know it's a tough way. It's a really long journey. So knowing that there's someone there, other people than just yourself who's going through the same thing, it's definitely great. And I also found that by getting involved, I also found faculty members who are super supportive of your journey as well. Thank you, Sophie. And Natalie? Could you repeat the question? I'm sorry. Yeah, I can definitely repeat it. So how has getting involved benefited you? So getting involved has benefited me in a lot of ways, one of which, if I want to boil it down, is being competitive going forward in finding a career or going to um, post-bachelor education. So I want to earn a PhD in genetics, and that can be pretty competitive. A lot of the programs look for um, involvement, knowing that you are capable of handling being a student on top of doing research and being involved with your campus. And so getting involved has helped me figure out, similarly to Jacob, that yes, this is what I want to do. I want to go forward with this. This is what I feel like I maybe not meant to do exactly, to be that cheesy, but this is what I really want to do and I really like it. And so being involved has also helped me get into a really competitive internship. So I, it was supposed to be in person, but due to COVID, luckily it was able to go virtual. But I was an intern at the Naval Research Laboratory, which is pretty competitive. Um, it's also very like kind of hard because you have to go through a lot of steps for safety because you're dealing with government research. And so it's helped me really branch out and see that I'm capable of doing a lot more than I thought I would be able to. Great, thank you, Natalie. You make a great point. It does give you that competitive um, advantage. Um, and then I'll ask Alexander, how has um, getting involved benefited you? I think getting involved has kind of like opened the doorway to different opportunities because it's like the more that you do, the more you hear about other opportunities and other things that you can join and then the more you join those, the more you become like a stronger candidate and you're more easily accepted for like uh, prestigious awards or scholarships or internships or anything. And it just kind of like keeps snowballing in effect. So that way you just keep getting like more opportunities and more like awards. Absolutely. Um, and then our next question is going to be, so that was submitted by Alison Bautista in our, um, a registry forum and she asks what are some initial steps that I can make to build connections with faculty within the College of Science and Mathematics so if anyone wants to take that question go ahead I would recommend definitely looking at the biology or the chemistry websites um, and then I can put it in the chat box I think someone put it in for the biology but I can put it for the chemistry I'm just reaching out. Um, this is this kind of goes more directly for research, but in any way you can reach out to faculty. Um, you also have a faculty advisor listed on your My Fresno State, uh, and you can reach out to them to start to get those connections with faculty. But other than that, look at the faculty website and see what interests you, and then from there you can um, reach out to them and maybe set up a meeting if you with the, like a pre, like the pre-professional pre advisors just to get, build connections with those people early on 
and they can help you with like classes or anything like that. Adding on to what Jacob said, I, I think, uh, I think, um, something that's been helpful too is go to the office hours of your professors if you're like interested in the subject of the class as well like if you're like let's say it's there's a topic that comes up that's a special topic like let's say you're in chemistry and you really like the physical aspect of it maybe go to the office hours of your professor and talk to them about physical chemistry and see what pops up and maybe they'll lead you to the professors in the department that specifically do research on physical chemistry. On top of it, like um, I posted the link to the biology faculty and staff, definitely go through the list of the professors that are doing research and look through because a lot of them do really different stuff and a lot of it is really interesting and maybe would it help you in ways that you didn't realize or maybe you'll find out that you're really interested in something that you didn't even know existed. Yeah, but it's kind of like what Alexander said, right? The more opportunities you expose yourself to, the more opportunities you're able to know about. Um, and then another question that was submitted was um, from Jennifer Herrera. She asks, um, what advice do you have for freshman students and what skills are good to have as a freshman? I could say a few things because <laughs> I am a freshman. Um, so some advice I would have uh, for my fellow freshmen out there is kind of don't be scared to reach out because I know in the like the very beginning I was kind of scared to reach out. But a lot of these clubs actually are looking for freshmen to um, join. Um, so if you just reach out to them, they're more than happy to like guide you through how you can get involved in their club. and. Um, you'd be shocked at how many um, clubs actually want freshmen to be in like high leadership positions, just because um, not a, a lot of people like get involved. So they have open positions and then you might just end up getting one of the positions. Um, and I know a lot of upperclassmen have told me the earlier you start um, in a club or like a research opportunity, the better it is because the more time you have to kind of build and grow your relationships either with the people in that club or like with a faculty member if it's research and those relationships are like they become part of a network that you build upon and that can help you later on in like your career or they can help you find other opportunities Is there anyone else that wants to give advice to freshmen or what skill sets you wish you would have had when you were a freshman? Because I think that's so important to share. Yeah, I can add a little bit more. Um, definitely don't be afraid to ask questions. There is no dumb question when you're a, a, a freshman, just because you want to know, you want to make sure you know rather than assume. So that's one tip. Don't be afraid to ask questions, whatever, even if it's the simplest question. Um, don't be afraid to, you know, explore areas or explore the, the campus website. Cause I didn't know, like I said, I, I started getting involved a little later on. So getting involved early, um, kind of like off topic about, uh, fairs and club, uh, I mean, sorry, the or clubs and organizations more like study skills. Make sure you guys are getting that early on, like establishing what works for you. Um, a lot of the new freshmen in our college are assigned to a peer mentor. Make sure you guys take that advice that your mentor gives you. Those people do have the experiences um, and that they want to share with you. Maybe it can help answer your questions. Um, and yeah. It sounds like everyone keeps saying like communication, right? Email or, you know, communicate, just put yourself out there. I think that's a, a skill that is really intimidating at first, especially as a freshman, but I can just hear that each of you is echoing that message. Another question that we had submitted was from Amber. Um, she asks, best ways to get involved and what are your study tips and time management strategies? So maybe Jacob, you could just continue on with what you were referring to regarding study and maybe time management strategies. Sure. Absolutely. So like studying, 
make sure that, I mean, you, you'll have to get a few tests underneath your belt um, before you kind of know if your studying method works for you, but you kind of continue what you were doing in high school if that worked for you or make adjustments. Um, and always go to and see your professor. Don't be afraid to go see your professor before the exam because the professor is the one who creates the exam and will tell you how to study for the exam. And then also go visit them after. The after is more important than the before, believe it or not, because the after you kind of learn your mistakes and you learn where you can improve for next time. Um, and make sure as far as time management, make sure you have a weekly schedule that you follow and make changes along the way as you go throughout your uh, freshman year. And by the time you're done with your freshman year, that will be autopilot for you and you'll just kind of continue what you've started. Um, if anybody else wants to add anything. Yeah, um, to add on to what Jacob said, I definitely like the point he made with meeting with your professors before and after the exam, because they do write it. And then you can definitely figure out what to study for the test, because you want to study smart, not study hard, because then sometimes if you don't look at the lecture slides or you just mainly focus on the textbook, it's not going to help you. You have to understand what's the best material to study for an exam. And for time management skills, what I always tell my mentees is um, to create an Excel sheet, break down your schedule for the whole day. Because in college, you're much more independent, and especially in the virtual learning environment, it's much easier to get distracted from your phone, from everything else, just sitting there, not doing anything. So that's what I recommend, breaking down your schedule in an Excel sheet. Print it out, don't just keep it on your computer, because sometimes we tend not to look at that, and like put it somewhere where you'll see it. Like Print out multiple copies so you know what you're doing. And that's something that's definitely helped me out, for sure. I think adding on to what um, Dil Preet and Jacob have said, um, like working smart. Also, I know professors will say like, if this class is a certain amount of units, you should be studying this many hours outside of class. Know which classes you're strongest in and which ones you're not as strong in. So you can also make sure you allocate the correct amount of time to a class. Like you shouldn't be studying five hours for all of your classes if you feel a lot more confident in the material from classes one and two as compared to like three through five. Definitely try to focus your time where it's needed most. Thank you, Natalie. And I am going to hold off on the rest of the questions for the end so that we have our uh, time for our alumni panel that are coming up next. One of the ones was asked, is this, is this event specifically for freshmen? And no, it's for all levels of our college. We're going to be talking and, and after our alumni panel, you'll see all the different clubs and organizations that our college has to offer you. So just wait a couple of minutes after our panel and you'll, and you'll see all of those. Okay. Thank you so much, our student panel, for joining us. We'll have them waiting for, at, for us at the end for the Q&A. So if we didn't get to your question, we'll get to it at the end. With that being said, could I please ask our alumni panel to turn on their cameras and their microphones so that we can um, begin our panel. Like, let me um, welcome to the panel. We're welcoming Andres Nevarez. Let me show this really quick. We're welcoming Andres Nevarez and Annabelle Lenico to our panel. Okay, hello. I want to um, first start off by welcoming you both and thanking you for coming and um, spending some time with our students. Andres, can you please um, tell the students a little bit about yourself? Yeah, uh, I'm Andres Navarez. Um, I'm a first generation college student, uh, second generation here in the United States. Um, I didn't know about any of the clubs or organizations and I wish I went to something like this my freshman year. Um, I graduated uh, Fresno State 2014 and I started my PhD at UT Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas and then I transferred over to finish my PhD at UC San Diego. Um, and uh, I've been a big part of SACNAS, Society for the Advancement of Chicanos and Hispanics, 
um, in Native Americans in STEM. And so we have a science chapter here. I'll talk more about it, but that's a little bit about me. Thank you, Andres, and we'll welcome Annabelle. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Annabelle Lolinko. Uh, I graduated in 2016 in the fall, and I started graduate school at Iowa State. So I'm actually in the Midwest right now um, in 2017. And I recently just got my master's in physical chemistry, and I'm going for my doctorate in chemical education. Uh, I actually got a dual degree um, at Fresno State. I did chemistry and communication. So um, if you want to talk about, you know, your interests and things like that, I'm happy to talk about getting involved. So, yeah. All right, thank you. I think the, bet, the most asked question for our survey was, how has getting involved benefited you in your current career or in your future after college? I am happy to tackle that. Um, one club that I really got involved with, and I know I was talking a little bit in the chat, was the Chemistry Club. Um, and they're actually affiliated with the American Chemical Society, which is a professional um, society uh, throughout the nation and sort of internationally. And one thing that has been really beneficial and something that I've been um, very privileged to have been a part of is having been involved in the club sort of at Fresno State has led to opportunities to um, be a part of a national organization. And so I've been able to network and make friends um, kind of around the US. Uh, and uh, one of the opportunities uh, about being in a club that's affiliated with a national organization is that there are um, leadership opportunities at different levels. So um, outside of Fresno State, uh, the, the, the chemistry club also does things within um, the San Joaquin Valley, just locally. Um, and we also do things nationally, like go to national meetings. Obviously things are kind of virtual now and it's a little different, but I mean, even SACNIS is um, virtual this year. Uh, and one of the opportunities I got um, was uh, attending a leadership institute very broadly for the American Chemical Society. So I got to meet some national leaders in chemistry um, and that spun off into doing a, a fully paid week in Washington, D.C. and learning about science policy and advocacy and science communication, which was a lot of fun. And currently, um, sort of through all of those connections, I serve on a couple of the advisory boards um, through ACS. So it's really great to get involved. Yeah, um, it's, oh, yeah, it's dramatically uh, improved my life. Um, just in general. Uh, so I started out in LSAMP um, my freshman year, second semester. Um, and then I was from there, I was able to get involved in Metro. I don't know if that program's still around. Um, and then, uh, you know, you get summer internships to do research. Um, and starting the SACNES chapter at Fresno State. Um, I mean, that was huge for me getting into graduate school. Um, leadership uh, is very important um, for URMs, um, underrepresented minorities. And so to have that leadership and applying to grad school and having the research opportunities um, that Fresno State offers is amazing. And, and I still continue to work with SACNES to this day um, during graduate school because of uh, my involvement in SACNES helped me get uh, multiple fellowships that funded, has funded my entire PhD and has transferred with me. So um, it, it, PhD is free, but it's funded like my salary and research costs and everything. And so there's a lot of great opportunities that come even after Fresno State. Um, and a lot of the programs I had mentioned, you know, also help you uh, network and help you find funds for your research, et cetera. Um, but it's uh, extremely important to, to get involved on campus. 
Thank you. And I'm hearing that, you know, those connections that you form, even within college, they follow you throughout, you know, your career and they open opportunities for you. So that that's fantastic. We had a question come in from um, Zian Dina um, Maya, and she asked, what can I do as an undergraduate student um, to be a good prospect for medical school? Okay. Uh, med for medical school, um, I guess, I mean, I'm not, I didn't go to medical school. I considered it, um, but I wasn't cut out for what you had to do. Um, but from what I hear and from what a lot of the organizations I've worked with that have a lot of students interested in medical school is to take a biology or STEM related major, make sure you're taking these prerequisite classes and then to get involved in some capacity of either some volunteering at a hospital or even equivalent research. Um, I think someone in the chat had asked about research that's related to a medical field. Um, and I think just having that research experience in general, I mean, there's a lot of things that can be related to a medical field. And in any instance, it can be everything is related to a medical field in some form or another um, because of the way science works, you ping pong these ideas and you build off of each other. So just getting the research experience, getting the analytical tool set that's going to um, really push you once you get into medical school. And once you're there, um, from what I've seen at the biomed institution I was at, it's just tons of studying for your first couple of years. And then you're in the um, actually doing stuff later on. But so, that, you know, creating good study habits um, after getting involved is important. And Annabelle, maybe this question is better suited for you. Um, they asked essentially the same question, but how um, can an undergraduate student um, make themselves a good prospect for graduate school? I think one thing, and Andres can speak on this too, is curiosity. Uh, I think part of that is being an independent learner as well. Um, and that's something you grow into. That's not a right away thing. Um, people go to graduate school for many different reasons. Uh, so there's not one clear answer, uh, but those are a couple of traits that I think would serve you really well. Um, as an undergraduate, getting opportunities. So at Fresno State, being able to do research um, has been really helpful. Um, getting involved in programs. So I mentioned LSAMP and McNair and Leah was really kind to put in the links. You can check those out as well um, to, to get connected with a mentor. Um, just staying engaged with your community because uh, one thing you definitely don't want to do is be involved just with research or just your studies um because grad school can be all consuming so you you definitely want to have a life outside of that so yeah um so the question was what to what characteristics to foster in your undergrad for grad school yeah for grad school okay um so one of the things that i always tell all my my mentees is get extremely comfortable with failure um, and uh, the, the great example that I give is my first week at Fresno State, I had my introductory to biology class and it said, you know, you need to get involved in research. It's the best way to kind of to learn and we have great opportunities here. So I emailed, I just mass emailed, I think every single one of the faculty in 2010 and I got like tons of no responses or no's um, and it was like depressing at first, but then you have to get used to that and it only takes one yes. And I got a yes from a young faculty at that point. And then it was, again, failure, failure, failure. I think this crowd and the students at Fresno State are actually ideally suited for graduate school because we deal with a lot of adversity um, in our city and given um, where we're at. And so to be able to overcome adversity uh, on multiple levels it puts you in a great position for graduate school because every day is a challenge. 
you don't get big wins. You know, that big win comes when you publish your paper or you defend. But every other every day is tons of failures. You get small wins. So small wins are something that we all live off of. You know, hey, this did this small thing work today, or I wrote, you know, a paragraph today that actually made sense. So get used to the losses, but comfortable with the small wins. Don't think every day is going to be a victory. Um, but you can in the grand sense, but you can make every day a victory. And it's really about kind of having that turning of a phrase and turning of a, of a opportunity. So that way it's a positive thing because it's going to happen often. Well, thank you, Andres and Annabelle. I'm going to have to cut the panel a little bit shorter than I wish we could keep talking, but we're going to hand it over right now to Mandy, but please stay on if you can for our Q&A at the end. I'm sure students have a ton of questions to ask you, so um, we'll have you on then. Thank you. Hi everyone, so I'm just gonna go through some of the clubs we have affiliated with the College of Science and Math. And since we are all online in the middle of a pandemic, I think it's especially important that you note down their social media if you're interested in them, because that would be the best way to contact them. So the first club we're gonna be talking about is Doctors Without Borders. This club is essentially um, focused on or contributing to a global movement, providing medical aid where it's needed most. And um, I know they do a lot of workshops about global health and they provide a lot of information. So it's a great club if you're pre-med or just interested in global medicine. The second club is the Fresno State Pre-Vet Club. Um, this club is dedicated to helping its members apply to vet school and um, providing a lot of community service opportunities for pre-vet students. Next, we have the Sustainability Club. This club is super active, and what they're trying to do is foster a sense of sustainability on campus and throughout the greater Fresno community. Excuse me? Uh, yeah. The presentation isn't showing up. Is anybody else having that problem? I can, I can see it. I can see it. This is being recorded, so in the event that you can't see it, um, I think we're going to come up with a way to send this out to all of you. So you will have access to this. But just to be mindful of your time, I'm going to continue if that's all right. Um, next, we have AMSA, or the American Medical Student Association. This is great if you're pre-med because they really invite a lot of um, medical students and local physicians to come talk to students. And in case you're looking for a shadowing opportunity, some of the physicians are able to provide those for you. So this is great if you're pre-med. We also have SACNAS, as um, one of our speakers mentioned before, they founded this chapter here, the Society for Advancement of Chicanos and Native Americans in Science. Um, note, you do not have to be a Native American or Chicano to join the club. I joined their club and um, they provide a lot of informative resources about navigating postgraduate studies or making yourself a competitive um, undergrad applicant for any program really. We also have the Fresno State Pre-Medical Club, and their goal is to provide students with resources and information for pursuing medical school. They have a lot of volunteer opportunities, and they're pretty similar to AMSA, but they both have different um, modes of action, I would say. There's also Pre Fresno State Pre-Farm Club, and if you're interested in becoming a pharmacist, they have lots of workshops, invite lots of pharmacists, and they even invite schools to um, talk about their pharmacy programs. We also have Camp Kesem, which is um, basically an organization that supports children through and beyond their parent or their family member's cancer. They hold a summer camp every year. I think this year it was done virtually. But um, it's really good if you're really just interested in uh, connecting with people and um, working with people. I know a lot of people in this club are pre-med, but you don't necessarily have to be. It's just a great way to practice community service. We also have the Fresno State Applied Behavior Analysis Club. 
Um, and this is to join or join to gain research experience in ABA and opportunities related to applied behavior analysis. We also have the Society of Physics students, and this is to help any physics majors or those or students interested in physics um, regarding physics related opportunities. Sorry, I'm not a physics student. <laughs> We also have Computer Science Club. Um, this is a student-led group that fosters interest and discussion on computer science-related topics. And of course, the College of Science and Math. I would encourage all of you to follow our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook if you can. Um, we give out lots of informative uh, resources, especially on Instagram. <laughs> 